everyone. Welcome to All About You. My name is Paula and today we will be meditating in Isaiah 11 verse 4. Okay? I want, I want for you to, every time, I know you know, you probably know about this, but I'm going to tell you again. Every time you, you meditate in the Word of God, every time you, you read the Bible, you have you must do a sincere prayer before and you need to ask god to open your spiritual understanding because you know most of the times if not all the time the devil he he will he will try to put a thought or a worry in your mind and eventually you will read the bible but you will not e extract you won't listen what the the what God wants to show you, what God wants to, to speak to you. So it's very important that you know this in your mind, in your in your intelligence, in your using your rational faith. Okay, so this moment that I'm taking for God to read the Bible, to know more of God, to listen to the voice of God is important. And of course, the devil is going to try to do everything. He's going to use people. He's going to use your phone. He's going to use a lot of things to, to make you distracted. That's the word. To make you distracted. So just thinking about that, don't let anything to distract you. But stay that, there in, in that moment when you meditate in the Word of God with all your mind, with all your strength, you know, putting God above everything and everyone because when the problems come, only God can help you, no one else, no friends, no family, no human being can help you or has the power to help you go through the situations in life. So learn to prioritize God, especially in the beginning of your day read the Bible, and don't forget to make this prayer for God to open your spiritual understanding and rebuke all evil, all thoughts, all worries to impede you from learning more of God and listening to His voice, okay? So today, uh, in Isaiah 11, verse 4, I'm going to read to you this this verse is in New King James version because it, it's similar to the to the Portuguese version that I, I was reading. So it says like this. It speaks about the Lord Jesus. This the, the, the prophet Isaiah he, he prophesied about the Lord Jesus. And there's this this chapter 11 he speaks about him. He speaks about his qualities. He speaks about who is going to be, what is going to bring to us. You can read it afterwards, okay? The whole chapter. But especially this, this verse, it's very strong. It was very strong to me. And it, it goes like this. He's, he's talking about the Lord Jesus. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. So every time you read the Bible, try to, to have a dictionary with you also, so that you can know what sometimes the words mean, because sometimes you read it, but you don't understand the meaning of the words, so you won't understand what, it, what, it, what, what it's talking about, right? So for us to understand, sometimes I do this. I have a dictionary. I go to the dictionary to see what does this really mean so that I can understand the whole context of the, of the passage, of the, the verse. So equity, he will decide with equity. What does it mean? I went to search and it means the quality of being fair and impartial. So he will judge everyone. He will judge everyone with equity, with justice. Everyone, everybody likes, loves justice. Everyone search for justice in their lives, right? So 
the Bible talks about this, that the Lord Jesus, he will, he will judge us. And it, it's this judgment or this quality of being fair and impartial, it's not only when we are up there with him in heaven, in the judgment day, but every single day. And this judgment, this, um, this equity that he uses to, to being fair and, and impartial with us is to help us is to show us things that even with the Holy Spirit, we still struggle with. And he will show us daily. And I was thinking about, okay, if the person is already meek, and meek means to be quiet, a gentle person, submissive. So it doesn't, meek, when we think about it, it, it it shows us a person that has qualities. Oh, this person is meek. She's quiet. She's gentle. She's submissive. But even though with all of these qualities, the Lord Jesus judge, the Lord Jesus calls our attention. You know, it's interesting to, to mention that in the Portuguese version, um, it says, he will rebuke with justice the meek. He will rebuke us. And this meek, like I was saying before, this meek is a good quality. Someone that, that is quiet, gentle, submissive. It's good qualities. But even though this person is meek, this person, the Lord Jesus, rebukes sometimes with, with uh, impartiality, right? Right? He, the, the quality that he will rebuke us is like a father. When a fa I remember when my mother, most my mother, my mother, she used to rebuke me. She didn't do it because she was being vindictive or she was being mean to me or she, was, she wanted to, to, for me to suffer. The opposite. She, she was rebuking me and she was correcting me all the time. Because I was very, I was a, a very stubborn child. So she was always rebuking me. And at the moment, it hurt me. But later on, I understood that it, she was helping me. She was showing me, um, she was showing me the right way for me to go, for me to, to make good decisions in life later on. So, you know, I, I kind of like... Um, I kind of like think about when I think about God rebuking us, I think about my mother because of the struggle that she had while I was growing up as a child. And I compare to it and God's love, what he wants to do in our lives when he rebukes us, when he guides us, when he shows us, when he pulls our ears is much more than a mother's love. His love is greater than mother's love. So imagine how big is God's love for us that he rebukes us and he rebukes even the meek. And I was thinking about it. Why does God re rebuke the, the meek if the meek is already full of qualities? He's gentle, so he's not, uh, you know, a tough person. He's not uh, full of pride because he's submissive. Because only the meek can hear the voice of God. And even though they have these qualities, they are full of mistakes. They are full of things that they need to work on themselves. They are full of, of mistakes, of things that, oh, I didn't want to do that, but I, I did it. I'm sorry. Please, my God, forgive me. Please, my God, give me strength for me to do better next time. So this is the kind of person that God seeks God doesn't seek perfection. Even if we tried, we couldn't be perfect all the time. So, but what he searched for is someone that is submissive. Even though we, we are going to make mistakes, even if, even if it's not in actions, it's in our thoughts, in our eyes, with our words, a reaction that we have. It's always something that God is going to show us. But only those that are meek, 
that are submissive. You see, the, 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 the dictionary says quiet. So this person is not the person that is always asking questions or is always, uh, oh, why this? Why is this happening? Why that is happening? Oh, let me do it. God is not doing, so let me do it. Let me give him a help. God doesn't need our help, right? A gentle person, someone that um, I can see that is someone that can wait for God to for for God to do something about the situation that the person is in, and submissive. When a rebuke comes, no one likes to be rebuked. No one likes to be oh you're doing a mistake. But when the person is submissive, she understands. Okay, God, that what I what I said, the way I'm thinking about someone else, or this attitude that I had towards someone, this, uh, I, I'm not able to forgive yet, but you are asking me, this is for my good, it's for my own good, it's, it's not for someone else's good, it's for me, it's not for that person that hurt me, it's for me, it's for my, I'm gonna, I'm going to be, I'm going to be able to be free of this feeling, so whenever God asks us for anything, and usually it's something that hurts because it goes against our will. Our will is, is, is one thing, but God's will is something else. But we have to be meek for God to be able to speak to us. We have to be submissive. We have to be, to be still, to be quiet. My God, show me what to do. I don't know. I don't know all the things. I don't know all the things. I'm not the owner of the truth. Sometimes this, this can happen to you, even though you have the Holy Spirit. But maybe you are going through a situation that God is showing you something. And you are there. You are, no, I'm not going to give this. This is too hard. I'm not going to give this because this is all I have. Listen, God, he speaks, but there's going to be a moment if we reject his, his voice, if we are stubborn, he's going to stop speaking or better yet, it doesn't stop speaking, but because we are not closer to him, we don't listen to him anymore. His voice is very far. And whenever our conscience accuses of something that we did wrong, if we are not close to God, we will still have that, oh, yes, I did that wrong. But, oh, well, everyone, everybody does it. Everyone does it. It's, it's so small. But for God, there is no big mistakes or small, or small mistakes. For God, a sin is a sin, a mistake is a mistake, and we need to correct it immediately. Because God is asking of us, in that moment, that sacrifice. So we need to give. So I encourage you in, in this video to look inside of yourself, to search, okay, my God, what have you been ask, asking of me? What have you been... Um, telling me that I need to, to surrender to you or to stop doing and I don't, I decide not to give. Am I meek? Am I, do I trust in you when you ask me something? So you need to, to figure this out. You need to look inside of yourself and, and see. And, 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 See that, what are you doing? What are you doing whenever God asks you something? Whenever God asks you for you to stop looking at people with bad eyes. Or whenever God asks you for you to stop talking about people behind their backs. You know, sometimes it looks it's small. Oh, it's so small. But it's um, a mistake in your character. And this defines you as a, a Christian. Did you know that? So be careful with the small things. Because the Lord Jesus, he rebukes us. 
He calls our attention. But only those that are submissive, only those that are submissive, they will understand. They will, they will obey. They will say, Amen. They will say, I will do it. Only those. So, and in order for us to continue to listen to the voice of God, whenever he, he wants to direct us in, in the right path, we have to be closer to him. Because God is not going to speak with someone that is far. How is going to be able to? You, you can listen to me now because you are close to, the, to, to, to your computer, to your phone. But if, for example, if you mute me, you are not going to be able to listen. You are not going to be able to understand the thing that I'm saying. You're just going to look at me and my, my lips are going to be moving. But you will know what I'm saying. So the same thing is with God. If you mute God in your life, you're not going to be able to know where, which direction you will take. God, he doesn't want to be an accessory in your life just to be used whenever we, we need. He wants to be part of our lives forever, every single day, like a best friend, like your husband, right? So this is the message that uh, I have for you today. I hope it has blessed you as it had blessed me. So um, I would like also to, to take this opportunity to invite you to the self-help meeting, which we will be next Saturday at 3 p.m. here in Finsbury Park. Okay? You are more than invited. Bring your friends bring your your mother your sisters bring everyone all the women that you know <laughs> all right it's going to be a blessing it's going to be an eye eye opener for us women okay because we have a lot of fears but god will show you what is the greatest fear of all that we have women okay may god bless you and see you next time bye bye